Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, while the Christmas cards are coming in, and one of the favorite parts of that tradition is the pictures that are included of family and friends, seeing how much people have changed since the last time we've seen them or the last time we got a picture from them, or how the family has grown, especially those new additions to the family, proud parents, proud grandparents, holding those bundles of joy and posing them in different ways or with different sceneries or lots of different Christmas outfits. We love babies, don't we? We do. We just love babies. We had a baptism this morning of little uh, uh, Georgia Ray Bartelt, Jacob and Sarah Bartelt's baby girl, just a week old, precious. We love babies, especially during this time, because Christmas is about a baby, about a baby being born. Actually, it's about two babies. And our gospel lesson today is the account of two, those two babies meeting each other for the first time in their mother's wombs yet. And as these two unlikely mothers got together and were rejoicing and celebrating their pregnancies, Elizabeth, an elderly woman who was way beyond childbearing years, and Mary, a young teenager who is a virgin. And both of their pregnancies were miracles of God. God enabling Elizabeth and Zachariah to have a child. And then the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary so that she would give birth to our Savior. And so to, as these two babies met for the first time, these two important great figures of the salvation of our God, John the Baptizer and Jesus Christ. And as they met, the mothers rejoiced. They gave all glory and all praise to God. As Elizabeth talked to Mary about how she had been blessed, expressing how great God was that He chose her in her lowliness, and it is all about God who made her great by giving her this privilege to bear the Savior of the world. And Mary, as she broke into song, she gave all glory to God and the fact that He loves all and His mercy is to all, especially the lowly, that He lifts up. Fourth Sunday in Advent, and throughout this Advent season, we've been focused on Advent conspiracy. And we started with worship fully. The fact that we worship all the time. We're worshiping something all the time. We're either worshiping the Creator, or we're worshiping something He created. Most often, the thing that we put in that place of worship is ourselves. As we push God out and we want to be in first place. And so worshiping fully as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ is, is seeking to allow God His proper place in our lives, that we worship Him, the Creator, and not His creation. Second week, we talked about spending less. Well, a lot of shopping going on now, and now the stores are open 24 hours a day just to make sure people can spend all they possibly can spend, right? There's just so much emphasis, and we've talked about the fact that here we're celebrating the fact that our God humbled Himself and came into our world to be our Savior and is the best way to celebrate Overindulgence, consumerism is the best way to celebrate, is to, to go in debt um, for, for buying gifts. And so thinking about spending less during this season, 
which tied into last week's message of but giving more. And that giving more, spending less and giving more, is giving of ourselves, giving relationally, spending time with people, committing to people, giving the gift of our time, which is more costly than, than the, the things we buy and more valuable. Because when we think back on our Christmases, typically we don't remember the things we received. We remember the people we were with. Because it's all about relationships. God created us for relationships. So we worship fully, spend less, give more, and today, loving all. As Mary was visiting with Elizabeth, she broke out into song praising God, rejoicing in who God is and what He had done, how He had looked upon her in her lowly state, how she was greatly blessed, but it was all because of God and who He is and what He had done as He called her to be the mother of the Savior and that His mercy was to reach out to all. The next part of her song is she speaks about the great reversals. God is a God of reversals. And it talks about the fact that He, he, he brings down the, the proud and the high and the mighty. And He lifts up the lowly. It talks about he, he fills the hungry and He sends the rich away empty great reversals of, of God at work. If you remember, last week we talked about John being in prison. And while he was in prison, he sent a message to Jesus. And this message is, are you the one? Or should we expect someone else? And Jesus said to his disciples, go back and tell John what you're seeing. The lame are able to walk. The blind are able to see. The lepers are cleansed. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed. Because the message of Jesus and the reversals of God are both physical and spiritual. Physical as, as Jesus was, was meeting needs in people's lives. As He was giving them a, a foretaste of what was to come. The, the foretaste of the, of the new creation. When everything will be perfect again. When Christ comes again in all of His glory. As He was reaching out to people with love and compassion. And as He humbled Himself all the way to the cross, meeting our greatest spiritual need of all. As we, again, confess before the service, we're sinners and we are in constant need of God's love and His forgiveness. And He made that possible through the cross, paying the full price for all of our sin and rising victoriously from the dead so that we may have hope, hope in this life, hope for all eternity. And that great reversal that takes place in our lives because of the cross and the resurrection. That we're changed from unrighteous to righteous, from sinner to saint, from slave to a, a, a son or daughter of God. That change. Because our Lord's ministry was all about compassion and about love. As He reached out to people, as He met people where they were at, as he took care of physical needs, as he, as he said to the, the man who had been paralyzed all of his life, get up, take your mat. But he also said to him, son, your sins are forgiven. As that man walked out completely healed, physically and spiritually. As the Lord over and over again lived a ministry among the people, of compassion and love and forgiveness and grace. And He lives that among us 
You know, today as we've gathered together for worship, we confessed our sins at the beginning of the service. We heard the pronouncement, our sins are forgiven. We came and we received the Lord's Supper. He gave to us His his very presence for forgiveness and the strengthening of our faith as He feeds us and He nourishes us and He enables us to grow in, in the hope of His love and the certainty of His love. But He calls us as people who follow Him, people who love the Lord Jesus Christ, to be like Him. He loves all. And He calls us to people, be people who love all. Not just those that, that we know well, not just those that we really care about, but that we are to love everybody. Even people we've never met before, even people we don't know. When those who started Advent Conspiracy years ago, the few congregations that started it all, they challenged their members that as they were spending less at Christmas time, to take the amount that they normally would have spent at Christmas, take the amount they saved, and to give it to help someone else. And the specific cause they were doing at that time was providing clean water for people around the world. There are people all over our world that don't have clean water, that deal with disease because of the impurity of the water that's available to them. And so they contributed to help put in wells so that they could have fresh water. Do you know that every Christmas... Just in the United States, what's spent at Christmas time is 45 times more than what's needed to provide clean water across the whole world. 45 times more. Because so much is spent on stuff. And people around our world don't have clean water. That was what they did with their congregations. And we've done things in the past where we've had different drives and encouragement things. And so one of the questions we ask is we're challenged in this and and loving all is, is how do we honor God this Christmas? How do we honor Him, the one who has compassion and love and the one who calls us to have compassion and love? How do we honor Him, the one who loves the lowly? How do we love the lowly? as we celebrate Christmas? How do we use the the resources that that God has given us? If, If you have spent less, what do you do with what you've saved? How do you give that to help someone else out? Maybe there's somebody you know personally that's really having a difficult time and they need some help. I encourage you to help them. Maybe you want to do it anonymously, but I encourage you to do that. Maybe there's, you know, um, you know, there's so many different organizations that are out there that you can help people through in our community and around the world. To just list a few, there's Lutheran World Relief, Habitat for Humanity, Wheat Ridge, the Heifer Foundation, the Heifer Foundation, um, Food for the Poor, and the list goes on and on and on. There's so many different good organizations out there that we can support that are helping and blessing and loving others. So it's something to to think about and to pray about as, as a way to give honor to God and to celebrate what He has given us. And so how do you how do you pick one? Do some research. Go online. And, and what is it that tugs at your heart? For people to have clean water? For people to have a house to live in? For people to have food to eat? For people to have mosquito nets so they, they don't have to worry about getting malaria? What is it that tugs at your heart? And find something that tugs at your heart and consider, you know, and research the organization and, and, and uh, encourage giving gifts as we seek to love all. 
a way of honoring the Lord at this Christmas time. There's so many needs out there. So many people who need compassion and love. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? The baby who came? Because God's compassion and love for us. Because he wants us to be his and to be with him for all eternity. So he came down. And then he blesses us and he gives us resources so that we as followers and servants in his kingdom can share that same love and compassion to others as he gives us opportunity to be his hands, his feet, and his voice as we love all. We pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your love come down. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for humbling yourself and coming to be our Savior. We thank you for your compassion and your love for us, for your forgiveness and your grace. And Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you give to us. And we ask you, Lord, as, as we rethink the way we celebrate Christmas, we would spend less, but give more and love all. Bless us in our seeking to serve and to help those in need. Guide us and direct us that in the use of our gifts, we may give glory and praise and honor to you. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.